Given the limits of these three functions as x approaches 2, we can find these various other limits involving those functions using our basic limit laws. These are the limit laws we're going to need as they appear in Stewart's calculus. Link in the description to the lesson where we introduce these laws. Let's use them now to evaluate a few limits. Beginning with the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x plus g of x. The limit laws tell us that we can split the limit of a sum of functions into the sum of limits. So to calculate the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches 2, we need only add the limit of f of x as x approaches 2, which is 4, to the limit of g of x as x approaches 2, which is negative 2. And so our limit, of course, is positive 2. Now, what about the limit of g of x cubed as x approaches 2? Well, our limit laws assure us that this is the same as the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x, and then we can just cube that, whatever the limit is. We already know that the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 is negative 2. So this is just negative 2 cubed, which of course is negative 2. You can see these properties allow us to confidently carry out computations that we would expect to be true, and indeed they are. What about part c, the limit of the square root of f of x as x approaches 2? While the limit laws assure us that the limit of the square root of f of x is going to be the square root of the limit of f of x, we know that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is 4. So this limit must be the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Next, problem D, the limit of 3 f of x over g of x as x approaches 2. The limit laws assure us that we can split this up into a simple product and division. This is going to be equal to 3 times the limit of f of x in the numerator, with x approaching 2 of course, and then we can just divide this by the limit of g of x as x approaches 2. We already know that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is 4, so the numerator is 3 times 4, which is 12. In the denominator, the limit of g of x as x approaches 2 is negative 2. So the denominator is just negative 2, and thus our answer is negative 6. Next, problem E, the limit of g of x over h of x as x approaches 2. Looking at the given information, the limit of g of x, the numerator, as x approaches 2, is negative 2. But the limit of h of x, the denominator, as x approaches 2, is 0. So this limit in part E does not exist. I'll just write D and E. If we just plug in the known limits, we get negative 2 over 0. So this doesn't exist, and we also can't say if it's going to positive infinity or negative infinity or neither, because we don't know how h of x is approaching zero. We know that it is approaching zero, but we don't know how. If this horizontal line represented y equals zero, h of x could be approaching zero from below, or it could be approaching zero from above, or it could be oscillating between positive and negative. So we're not sure exactly what's happening in the denominator. We just know it's approaching zero, and the numerator is approaching a finite number, and so the limit does not exist. Finally, problem f, the limit of g of x times h of x over f of x as x approaches 2. We can break this down into the product of the limits, divided, of course, by the limit of f of x, assuming that everything works out nicely. The limit of g of x as x approaches 2 is negative 2. So in the numerator, we'll have negative 2 and then multiply by the limit of h of x as x approaches 2, which we know is 0. We don't know exactly how it's approaching 0, but in this example, it might not matter. The limit of f of x, the denominator, as x approaches 2 is 4, and so we can see that this whole limit is going to be equal to 0. Negative 2 times 0 in the numerator is 0. Doesn't matter how it's approaching 0, it 
is approaching zero. And so when we divide that by four, we're going to get zero. So knowing just a few limits, we can evaluate the limits of all sorts of combinations of functions by using our basic limit laws. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.